Hello, thank you for joining me today. Linda Lamp here. We've been reading A Course in Miracles, the main text, and today we're going to read chapter 25, The Justice of God, section four, The Perception, Perception and Choice, and I think we'll also read section five, The Light You Bring. So thank you for joining me today, and we'll get started. Well, we'll get started in a second. <laughs> Here we go. A Course in Miracles, Chapter 25, The Justice of God, Perception and Choice. To the extent to which you value guilt, to that extent will you perceive a world in which attack is justified. To the extent to which you recognize that guilt is meaningless, to that extent you will perceive attack cannot be justified. This is in accord with perception's fundamental law. You see what you believe is there, and you believe it there because you want it there. Perception has no other law than this. The rest but stems from this to hold it up and offer it support. This is perception's form adapted to this world of God's more basic law that love creates itself and nothing but itself. God's laws do not obtain directly to a world perception rules, for such a world could not have been created by the mind to which perception has no meaning. Yet are his laws reflected everywhere? Not that the world where this reflection is, is real at all. Only because his son believes it is, and from his son's belief, he could not let himself be separate entirely. He could not enter his son's insanity with him, but he could sure his, in, sure his sanity went there with him, so he could not be lost forever in the madness of his wish. I'm going to read that sentence again. Maybe I'll read that whole paragraph again. God's laws do not obtain directly to a world perception rules, for such a world could not have been created by the mind to which perception has no meaning. Yet are his laws reflected everywhere. Not that the world where this reflection is, is real at all. Only because his son believes it is, and from his son's belief, he could not let himself be separate entirely. He could not enter his son's insanity with him, but he could be sure his sanity went there with him, so he could not be lost forever in the madness of his wish. Perception rests on choosing. Knowledge does not. Knowledge has but one law because it has but one creator. But this world has two who made it, and they do not see it as the same. To each it has a different purpose, and to each it is a perfect means to serve the goal for which it is perceived. For specialness, it is the perfect frame to set it off the perfect battleground to wage its wars, the perfect shelter for illusions, which it, would, which it would make real. Not one, but it upholds in its perception, not one, but can be fully justified. There is another maker of the world, the simultaneous corrector of the mad belief that anything could be established and maintained without some link, that it kept it still within the laws of God not as the law itself upholds the universe as God created it, but in some form adapted to the need of the Son of God believes he has. Corrected error is the error's end, and thus has God protected still his Son, even in error. There is another purpose in the world that made error that Oh, there is another purpose in the world that error made because it has another maker who can reconcile its goal with his creator's purpose. 
In his perception of the world, nothing is seen but justifies forgiveness and the sight of perfect sinlessness. Nothing arises but is met with instant and complete forgiveness. Nothing remains an instant to obscure the sinlessness that shines unchanged beyond the pitiful attempts of specialness to put it out of mind where it must be and the light of body up instead of it. The lamps of heaven are not for mind to choose to see them where it will. If it elects to see them elsewhere from their home, as if they lit a place where they could never be, then the, must the maker of the world correct your error, lest you remain in darkness where the lamps are not. Everyone has entered darkness, yet no one has entered it alone, nor need he stay more than an instant, for he has come with heaven's help within him, ready to lead him out of darkness into light at any time. The time he chooses can be any time, for help is there, awaiting but his choice. And when he chooses to avail himself of what is given him, then will he see each situation that he thought before was means to justify his anger turned to an event which justifies his love. He will hear plainly that the calls to war he heard before are really calls to peace. He will perceive that what that where he gave attack is but another altar where he can with equal ease and far more happiness bestow forgiveness. And he will reinterpret all temptation as just another chance to bring him joy. Can, can misperception be a sin? Let all your brother's errors be to you, nothing except a chance for you to see the workings of the helper given you to see the world he made instead of yours. What then is justified? What do you want? And for those two questions are the same. And when you see them as the same, your choice is made. For it is seeing them as one that brings release from the belief there are two ways to see. This world has much to offer to your peace and many chances to extend your own forgiveness. Such its purpose is to those who want to see peace and forgiveness descend on them and offer them the light. The maker of the world of gentleness has perfect power to offset the world of violence and hate that seems to stand between you and his gentleness. It is not there in his forgiving eyes, and therefore it need not be there in yours. Sin is the fixed belief perception cannot change. What has been damned is damned and damned forever, being forever unimaginable. Un, rather unforgivable. If then it is forgiven, sin's perceptions must have been wrong, and thus is change made possible. The Holy Spirit too sees that he sees as far beyond the chain, chance of change. But on his vision, sin cannot encroach, for sin has been corrected by his sight, and thus it must have been an error, not a sin. For what it claimed could never be, has been. Sin is attacked by punishment and so preserved. But to forgive is to change its state from error into truth. The Son of God could never sin, for he can wish for what would hurt him. Let me do that again. The Son of God could never sin, but he can wish for what would hurt him. And he has the power to think he can be hurt. What could this be except a misinterpretation of himself? Is this a sin or a mistake, forgivable or not? Does he need help or condemnation? Is it your purpose that he be saved or damned? Forgetting that what he is to you will make this choice your future? Let me read that again. Forgetting not that what he is to you 
will make this choice your future. For you make it now, the instant when all time becomes a means to reach a goal. Make then your choice, but recognize that this choice, the purpose of the world you see is chosen and will be justified. And we'll continue with section five, the light you bring. Minds that are joined and recognize they are can feel no guilt for they cannot attack and they rejoice that this is so, seeing their safety in this happy fact. Their joy is in the innocence they see and thus they seek it because it is their purpose to behold it and rejoice. Everyone seeks for what will bring him joy as he defines it. It is not the aim as such that varies, yet it is the way in which the aim is seen that makes the choice of means inevitable. And beyond the hope of change, unless the aim is changed. And then the means are chosen once again, as what will bring rejoicing is defined another way and sought for differently. Perception's basic law could thus be said, you will rejoice at what you see because you see it to rejoice. And while you think that suffering and sin will bring you joy, so long will they be there for you to see. Let me read that again. And while you think that suffering and sin will bring you joy, so long they will be there for you to see. Nothing is harmful or beneficent apart from that, from what you wish. It is your wish that makes it what it is in its effects on you. Because you choose it as a means of, to gain these same effects, believing them to be bringers of rejoicing of joy. Even in heaven does this law obtain. The Son of God creates to bring him joy, sharing his Father's purpose in his own creation, that his joy might be increased and God's along with his. You, maker of a world that is not so, take rest and comfort in another world where peace abides. This world you bring with you to all the weary eyes and tired hearts that look on sin and beat its sad refrain. From you, can come their rest. From you can rise a world they will rejoice to look upon and where their hearts are glad. In you, there is a vision that extends to all of them and covers them in gentleness and light. And in this widening world of light, the darkness they thought was there is pushed away until it is but distant shadows far away, not long to be remembered as the sun shines them to nothingness. And all their evil thoughts and sinful hopes, their dreams of guilt and merciless revenge and every wish to hurt and kill and die will disappear before the sun you bring. Would you not do this for the love of God and for yourself? And think what it would do for you. Your evil thoughts that haunt you now will seem increasingly remote and far away from you. And they go further and further off because the sun in you has risen that they may be punished or pushed away before the light. They linger for a while, a little while, in twisted forms too far away for recognition and are gone forever. And in the sunlight you will stand in quiet and innocence and wholly unafraid. And from you will the rest you found extend so that your peace can never fall away and leave you homeless. Those who offer peace to everyone have found a home in heaven a world cannot destroy, for it is large enough to hold the world within its peace. In you is all of heaven. Every leaf that falls is given life to you, in you. Each bird that will ever sing 
or rather each bird that ever sang will sing again in you. And every flower that ever bloomed has saved its perfume and its loveliness for you. What aim can supersede the will of God and of his son that heaven be restored to him for whom it has created as his only home? Nothing before and nothing after it. No other place, no other state or time, nothing beyond nor nearer, nothing else. In any form, this can bring you all the world and all the thoughts that entered it and are mistaken for a little while. How better could your own mistakes be brought to truth than by your willingness to bring the light of heaven with you as you walk beyond the world of darkness into light? Well, it's a lot of words to really say that your divinity, your divinity in form and what you believe is what you're creating, right? Perception and choice. If you believe that there's evil, then that's what you're going to see. If you believe the world is love, that's what you're going to see and experience. And the real key here is for each of us to step into our divinity. Be God, be love. Give up the labels, move into this understanding that we've been reading about for months now. The text is not easy, I admit. It's difficult to absorb it in the way that it's written. But the point here is you are divinity in form. And as is everything else and everyone else. And so when you change, your experience of everything around you will change as well. So that will conclude the reading for today. If you would like additional support, you can reach out to me, 907-351-3003. You can also message me through the website, lindalamp.com or lindalamp.shop. And you can find us on Facebook in the Love by Light group. Thank you again. And until next week, namaste and much love.